So in this video, we're going to check out a couple of different ways for implementing um, authentication using Sophos XG. So we're using the same configuration that we set up where we've created an Active Directory and uh, configured Sophos to work with that Active Directory. So now in terms of the multi-factor authentication where we want to set that up, we're going to go to authentication and we're going to go to the section that says one-time password. If your screen doesn't see it, just the, the extra tabs are down here. So we'll go into the one tab, uh, the one-time password and find the settings button. And in here, we're going to turn on the one-time password and it's going to be for all users and we're going to auto-create the OTP tokens for all users. We'll enable this for the user portal and for the web admin. And I'm just going to go with the defaults for the rest of it. And that tells me that the OTP settings have been updated. So now if I go across to the normal login portal, that's the, just the, the normal, not the admin portal, and, and I log in as Sue Blue with her normal password, then for the first time, we'll get a QR code. So let's just have a look. Now we have to go and download the Sophos Authenticator app for the phone. And uh, let's have a look at what that looks like. So I've got my Sophos app that I got from the Google Play Store. And I scan the QR code. Sorry about the quality of the image, but there's the six digit number that I need. So this time I can proceed to the login which looks like the normal login, but this time I'm going to enter my password. And the six digit number. Hang on. Let's just show you what I'm doing here. So it's zero five four three three five. And let's try and log in. And Sue's logged in with multi-factor authentication. So while we're looking uh, in different authentic authentication methods, let's have a look at how Kerberos is set up. Now, one of the things about Kerberos is that we need to have a host name. So if you haven't set this yet, just jump in and set your host name. I've called mine my Sophos. Um, also, while we're in this area, Sophos requires the active domain single sign-on uh, authentication service. So make sure that one is selected. While you're there, have a look at the various other services that by default um, were added to our LAN. And um, so, yeah. We, we might come back and talk about some of these a bit later. Uh, then we want to go to the uh, authentication menu and we've already got our active server um, active directory set up. Make sure it's at the top. We You have a choice of either the local or the domain controller, this is the Sophos in this case, local is Sophos, or the domain controller, the order here is important. So do that. And then we go and have a look in the web authentication. And for um, the Active Directory um, single sign-on, we configure it to be Kerberos and NTML. So it'll First of all, try and do a Kerberos authentication, and if that fails, it will do an NTLM authentication. 
So uh, just to round that off, if um, if we then go to the log viewer and have a look at um, the authentication types, we can get this uh, message that there, there's been a, a, a successful integrate um, authentication between the Kerberos um, authentication initialized successfully with my active domain server. So back on my um, domain controller, uh, let's try out the, the Kerberos authentication. So I've set up a web server here, the, an IIS server and made a, um, a site here. Uh, I'll leave the setting up of the IIS server for another video, but just to sort of kind of give you an idea, if we go into my site, and I've got the default site, and I've set a site up here. So if I go into this site that I've set up, uh, it's actually uh, set to be SRITNEO1. So if I... If I go at the moment to that site um, and notice it's just running on normal HTTP, uh, we'll get the welcome to the website message. Um, if we go back in here and go into, let, let me just make this a bit larger and go into the authentic uh, authentication settings, we can see that it's set to be um, enabled for anonymous authentication, but we're going to um, disable that one and enable the uh, digest authentication. If you don't see digest authentication, if you see Windows authentication there, then it will just be the NTML authentication but if you see digest authentication then it's the domain controller saying that it recognizes um, that um, Sophos is acting as a um, uh, as a key center as a um, as, as a an, uh, key distribution center so so that's wh what you'll know when you see this digest authentication. So let's try that out in the on the website now. So this time then if I try to log on oh, that's not right. Try again http slash slash S R I T N E O one dot E D U. Uh, I get a request here for some credentials, and I won't remember them. I'll and then I get to my website. So if we, so if I um, go back to my Windows ten machine, which I'm using to um, manage my Sophos firewall. Uh, and I click on again on the log viewer, then I can just have a look at the authentication filter. And yeah, it's come up with the authentication that was done to that website with a Kerberos authentication message there. Incidentally, it also gave me a NTLM. I'm not sure about that one, but th the fact that we got the Kerberos message there uh, tells me that um, that the key server, the, the key distribution um, s service that's offered by Kerberos was uh, invoked for that logon. Okay. So I think that's all for this time. If you want to go ahead and have a go at setting up the um, your domain controller um, as a web server, there's 
it's fairly straightforward. The one thing that I would say is um, you need to do something a little bit counterintuitive, which is um, uh, to give a second IP address for your website. So let me just show you what that looks like. Um, so this, this might be a little bit counterintuitive. So if we go to the IP um, for properties, you can see I've actually got my DC1 now um, sitting on two different IP addresses, 200 for my domain controller functions, and I've made 250 to be the IP address for my website. So um, anyway, I'll do a whole video on the step-by-step -step setting up, but if you want to jump ahead and have a go at, at um, setting that up and then setting the authentication to that website, then I say go ahead and have a go at it.